a massive volcanic eruption in Indonesia about 74,000 years ago likely caused severe climatic disruption in many areas of the globe. But early human populations were sheltered from the worst effects, according to a Rutgers-led study being released this week. Now, many of us have heard of the Toba catastrophe theory, where a bottleneck in actual humanity occurred 74,000 years ago, where many researchers claim that just a few thousand people remained after this catastrophe to repopulate the Earth. But it appears as if they're, well, extremely wrong, and wrong by a big margin. Now, the eruption of the Toba volcano was the largest volcanic eruption in the past two million years, but its impacts on climate and human evolution have been unclear. Resolving this debate is important for understanding environmental changes during a key interval in human evolution, and maybe a key interval in human, well, evolution happening now. Now, according to this group, they were able to use a large number of climate model simulations to resolve what seemed like a paradox. And that was said by the lead author, Benjamin Black, an assistant professor in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. He said, and I quote, we know this eruption happened and that past climate modeling has suggested the climate consequences could have been severe. But archaeological and paleoclimate records from Africa don't show such a dramatic response. Hmm. Interesting. And their results suggest that we might not have been looking in the right place to see the climate response. Africa and India are relatively sheltered during this time, whereas North America, Europe, and Asia bear the brunt of the cooling from this VEI-8 explosion. Black said. One intriguing aspect of this is that Neanderthals and Denisovians were living in Europe and Asia at the time. So our paper suggests evaluating the effects of Toba eruption on those populations could merit future investigations. Now the researchers analyzed 42 global climate model simulations in which they varied the magnitude of sulfur emissions, time of the year of the eruption, background climate state, and sulfur injection altitude to make a probabilistic assessment of the range of climate disruptions to the Toba eruption that may have caused. This approach led the team to account for some of the unknowns related to the eruption. Now by using this probabilistic approach, they aim at understanding the likelihood that some regions were less impacted by Toba, considering the wide range of estimates of its size and timing, in addition to our lack of knowledge of the underlying climate state. Well, this paper makes things a little clearer. Now, the results suggest there was likely significant regional variation in climate impacts. The simulations predict cooling in the Northern Hemisphere of at least 4C. Take a look at this up in Canada there. Holy macaroni. Uh, with regional cooling as high as 10C, and that's what I was pointing out there up by uh, Hudson Bay there. Extremely cold and an even an anomalous area here in the Four Corners region of around 5C or greater in cooling. Now, in contrast, even under the most severe eruption conditions, cooling in the southern hemisphere, according to these models here, was quite limited and was unlikely to exceed 4C. Quite interesting. Although regions in southern Africa and India may have seen decreases in precipitation at the highest sulfur emission levels, you can see here the temperatures were barely affected. Now, their results reconcile the simulated distribution of climate impacts from the eruption with paleoclimate and archaeological records. And according to the study, this type of 
probabilistic view of climate disruption from Earth's most recent super volcanic eruption underscores the uneven expected distributions of societal and environmental impacts from future very large explosive eruptions, like perhaps Tal. Now, we're going to go into detail this study and some of the evidence they're using. This paper here, coming out May 14th of 2013, that is a quite a bit ago, shows that ash from the Toba super eruption in Lake Malawi shows no volcanic winter in East Africa at 75 kilo years. And that's where they're getting this paleo reconstruction here. No cooling. Although you could see some severe cooling in North, the Northern Hemisphere. Now what's interesting is the Toba volcano is right here on the equator. And yet the biggest effect is in the Northern Hemisphere. Interesting. Now, humans survived the volcanic super eruption that caused the 10-year winter. Now, the 10-year winter happened in some regions. But in some areas, it might have only been a three-year winter or no winter at all. So that's what's interesting. If you were living here in Central Africa, it would have been as if nothing happened. Quite fantastic. And here in this paper, human occupations of northern India spans the Toba super eruption 74,000 years ago. Researchers present evidence that middle Paleolithic tool users were present in India before and after the Toba eruption. And they were using some fantastic tools. I can't even believe it. I did have some pictures. And let's see if we can grab a few of those. There they are. So there's all types of scrapers and other implements being used 75,000 years ago by these hominids. And there's almost no disruption before and after the eruption. And I didn't even mean to rhyme, but that's fine. Check out the papers for yourself. Now let's quickly go over some of the locations of the super volcanoes on Earth. Red being VEI-8 locations, the most prolific that most people know about Yellowstone. There are three in South America down the western coast, Cerro Guacha, Pancana, and Cerro Galan. We also have Toba and Taupo in New Zealand. VEI-7s, Crater Lake, Long Valley, Campi Falegri, Santorini, Bektu, Kuril, Kikai, Aso, Tambora, and Samalas. Those are all of the supervolcanic eruptions we know of in the last 20 million years. And we're waiting on the next one. Now let's talk about the Toba supervolcanic eruption, 2,800 times larger than Mount St. Helens. And the 1815 Tambora eruption that caused the year without a summer just 80 times larger than Mount St. Helens, pales in comparison to Toba, where you would think it would be the decade without a summer, and in fact, it was in many places, according to the new studies. These paleogeographic reconstructions tell you everything. Where were we? Comparison pictures. I'll leave you links to the Toba catastrophe theory if you've never heard of it. We're going to go over now some of the evidence that exists in the geologic record that paleoclimatologists like myself use to interpret. Now, this is the SO4 concentrations from 60,000 to 80,000 years ago, and the Toba eruption shows up quite nicely here with a spike at around 72. And that's an SO4 spike. And the isotope data from Antarctica and Greenland ice cores clearly show a massive downdrop here at about 74 to 72,000 years, where it is extremely anomalously cold. And here's a higher resolution version of that with overlying data sets of Toba M14 and Toba S12 confirmation samples spanning the N-grip ice core dip in temperature. 
And this corresponds to up a, to a 10 C dip and some of the coldest temperatures in all of the last glacial, glacial period for the last 80,000 years. The Toba eruption caused the coldest pinch point. There was just a couple blips of colder times here around 26,000, 28,000 years ago. And that was the peak maximum glaciation during the Wisconsinian. But after Toba, it was cold, folks. And based on all the information I just gave you, found a really nice video and a synopsis of all the information that the mainstream had up until recently. And you'll see they'll use the talking points of a pinch point and a bottleneck. But the evidence we show here in these two papers, the fact that there's no volcanic winter in East Africa, and at the same time, human populations survive without a glitch. In South Asia. Well, it's anyone's guess who's right. And it's probably us. And not the story that's written in the textbooks. It is estimated that over the past 132 million years, about 40 mega colossal super eruptions have occurred on our planet. One of the deadliest eruptions was that of the Toba supervolcano about 75,000 years ago. This supervolcanic eruption was so deadly and devastating for numerous species, including our own, that scientists formed the Toba catastrophe theory to explain the ravaging of vegetation, which in turn led to the near extinction of the human race. The Toba event may have triggered a volcanic winter lasting six to 10 years, and probably kicked off global cooling with a 1,000 year long cooling episode. The Toba super eruption has been linked to a genetic bottleneck in human evolution around 70,000 years ago. That may have been the result of a significant reduction in the size of the total human population due to the impact of the eruption on the global climate. Some genetic evidence revealed we are descended from as few as 1,000 breeding humans from around 70,000 years ago. These thousand people may have been the survivors of the aftermath of the Toba super eruption. Analysis of mitochondrial DNA have estimated that the major migration from Africa occurred 60 to 70,000 years ago, consistent with the dating of the Toba eruption 75,000 years ago. However, the link between the Toba super eruption and the genetic bottleneck theory or hypothesis has been subject to heavy criticism. In 2013, archaeologists reported finding a microscopic layer of glassy volcanic ash in sediments of Lake Malawi in Africa and linked the ash to the 75,000 year old Toba super eruption, but found no change in fossils close to the ash layer, something that would be expected following a severe volcanic winter. Another study from Lake Malawi dating to the period of the Toba super eruption showed no evidence of a volcanic winter and the eruption did not have a major climactic effect or any effect on the number of the human population. Be that as it may, one thing is for certain, the last and largest Toba super eruption 75,000 years ago had a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which is the highest rating of any known eruption on our planet. The estimated ejector volume of the eruption is about 2,800 cubic kilometers. That's nearly three times as much as the last full-scale eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. 800 cubic kilometers of erupted magma from the Toba super eruption were deposited as ash leaving a horizon of ashfall and covering large portions of South Asia in a 15 centimeter thick ash layer. It released 6 billion tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. After the magma chamber discharged, the collapse formed a caldera that filled with water, creating what is today Lake Toba. And there you have it from the, you know, the good, the fantastic Hollywood type presenters that use all the information. It makes a good story. Unfortunately, that story is probably incorrect, but give them a thumbs up here and subscribe to Science Time because it's a great production they put together. Now, what we've showed you is some of the data that they suggest. Uh, but what we want to get out of the video tonight is that there probably was not a bottleneck and the genetic 
um, studies are probably incorrect because based on paleoclimatology and anthropology, it is clear that many portions of the earth, well, were fine. And the populations in, let's say, Africa and probably all of South America, Australia, and Southern Asia, even though an eruption occurred, did not get affected by the winter that happened a little further north, north of 30 degrees latitude. So a little bit of a takeaway from this. Supervolcanic eruptions cool the planet in the northern hemisphere if they are on the equator only in the northern hemisphere. Very little cooling happens in the southern hemisphere except for some minor cooling in Antarctica in these models. I'll leave you links to all the papers and all the runs. Take a look at how cold Siberia here is in this run. And you can make your own conclusions on the super, the Toba supervolcanic eruption right here. One of the most unique and largest events in human, modern human history in the last, well, 100,000 years. And that was a few magnetic excursions ago. So we have a long way to go. We're waiting for tall volcano to puff and pass. Could be a VEI-6. It would pale in comparison to this Toba eruption at VEI-8 and would have almost no effect on the planet as a whole. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Leave questions below. This is ongoing research. And well, good news for those waiting for Yellowstone to blow. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Be safe. We love you.